that surprise you? Uh, well, we knew she was going to run well. Um, there were a couple other horses in that race so that were that were salty on paper, and they they turned out to be pretty nice horses. So we didn't know that she was going to run as well as she did, but we knew she, we had something there. Well, she just continues to beat salty horses. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, she's just exceeded every expectation, I'm sure. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, you go on a sale, you hope for the best, but realistically, and this is this is beyond any sort of expectation. We're just trying to enjoy it as much as we can. Well, I'm going to let you do just that and wish you the best of luck with Concrete Rose. She's been so fun to watch. Yeah, thank you very much, Maggie. I appreciate it. Okay, Bo Bromagen, the brains, if you will, behind Concrete Rose, guys. Incredible story. $62,000 purchase if Concrete Rose wins today. She will be racing's newest millionaire. Andy, did, did you have Concrete Rose when she broke her maiden last year, 12 to 1 in her debut? Uh, no. <laughs> but thank you for asking, Lafitte. I appreciate that. I thought that. I'd check. You're trying to give me a chance Just to gloat. No, I know you're trying to give me a chance to gloat about a 12 to 1 shot. I appreciate that. But no, you, you could I didn't. have lied and I wouldn't have known the difference. She was not you know one that. of my three winners in 2018 at Saratoga. <laughs> um, she's improved since that race. But I think Tom and I actually share an opinion. We're not trying to be. Listen, Concrete Rose is a very good horse. And a trainer like Tom, be very thrilled to have her in her barn. Uh, but I'm yes. not sure that she's what I would call like a, a huge star at this point. What she's done is she, I think her reputation got very much enhanced because of the way she blasted Newspaper of Record in her debut in 2018. For that, we're 19 for Newspaper Record. And everybody was so surprised the way she beat Newspaper Record. But Newspaper Record's not the horse we expected. She's been very good, but I think there are other challenges that could be out there. They may not, however, be today. Well, let's talk about Concrete Rose. So when you win like she did last time, Andy, we talk about this all the time on the air, that is a huge margin to win by on the turf. Yep. So you can't take that away from her. But I would say this about Concrete Rose. She has to do something to wow me, and I'm not sure against that group that's it. So if that's the case, at 2-5, to five, do you want a piece of Concrete Rose? Of course not. You want value. Andy, you've looked at it with the one horse you like of Chad Brown's. I get that. To me... Florent Giroux, who rides the four horse, Kelsey's Cross, loves to try to win races on the front end. And this could be an instance with the four horse, Kelsey's Cross, where she can make the lead and Concrete Rose's rider, Julian Lepreau, who's right next to her in the five hole, is going to say, go ahead and go. You're not a factor in this race. I'll just sit right off of you. But the turf course is so fast right now and is playing to speed, in my opinion, oh. that I will give this huge long shot, the longest shot in the race, our four horse, Kelsey's Cross, a little play here. I'm going to disagree. It's playing with speed. I don't mind you taking a long shot here. Well, thank I, you. I, I, I feel so I, I, much I better than you. Don't you mind. should. You should. Yeah. I'm going to let you do that, Tom, because that's the kind of benevolent guy that I am. I just don't know if she's good enough. But listen, she's the longest shot in the Fair board. Fair enough. I, I'm going to try to get box one five. Obviously, it's three dollars. It's for a dollar five one. But if I get the one five home, maybe I can make some money. Pace makes the race. Agreed. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Are we still open here? And didn't we have a, a track record from uh, a claiming 40 today? Went wire to wire. Turf and course is didn't fast, we had, man. Um, Somebody almost hold on. Uh, Speed's been good. And Absolutely. The, uh, and and not arguing. I I just I it's, it's fast. It, it's fast right now. Guys, it, 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 those races and the turf's very firm. And we did see a mile and a 16th race won from back of the pack in a very fast time. But I think the other race you're talking about were both in the inner turf at a mile. Yeah, but I'm in not fairness, saying the that they're not quick turf. Is very fast too. No, no, I agree. But the, the winner what, we saw was coming from way back in that race. So I don't well, know. I think those mile races favor speed more. That's all. I'm not arguing. I'm just pointing out the difference. Uh, we'll, we'll argue and debate more in a minute. Let's check in with Maggie. Thank you, Lafitte. And my two cents on that issue with the turf courses is that the inner turf course is usually the one that plays favorably to speed horses when it gets this fast. You usually see a little bit more of a fairer run race on the outer turf course in which this one is run it at going a mile and three sixteenths. Coral Beach, she had trouble. She was bothered a ton by uh, newspaper record going into that first turn. I don't know if that took a lot out of her. Now she's going to have to come back and travel so much. It doesn't look like it's physically affected her and I actually liked her a bit more than her stable mate that day just wonderful in the looks department I I totally heed what what Tom is saying about the traveling I don't like to see that shipping back and forth but Aiden O'Brien can do it but he usually can do it when it's in regards to the Breeders Cup not any other race in America Lafitte it was just last year's Belmont Oaks Belmont Park Coolmore Aiden O'Brien Athena popped it 12 to 1 Coral Beach trying to do the same this afternoon in the first ever Saratoga Oaks. Gary, final thoughts as they move into the starting gate. Well, I, I think it's concrete uh, Rose's race to lose, and I don't think she will lose. Um, I think we have a very average uh, three-year-old Philly crop. I'll be honest, I heard Martin Panza 
director of racing here at Naira, uh, say earlier today the same thing. But uh, she, she is tops of what we have. Here she is, Concrete Rose. Does the quest for the Triple Tiara continue? We're about to find out. Post time for the first ever Saratoga Oaks. Here's Larry Colmes. They're off in the Saratoga Oaks. Happen a bit slow into stride here. Concrete Rose goes up on the outside of Olin Daw, and right behind them is Coral Beach with Happen to the inside and fourth. Kelsey's Cross wrangled to the back of the pack to trail the field early, and the pace is very slow as Concrete Rose and Julian Le Paru take the initiative here, and a bit headstrong is Olin Daw, who's down on the inside running in second as they waltz through this first fraction. And then to the outside, it's Coral Beach. Happen saves all the ground into that turn. Kelsey's cross trails 25.58 was that opening quarter mile. So it's Concrete Rose in front, out there on an easy lead by a length and a half over Coral Beach. And then a hard-held Olin Dahl who continues to fight third on the inside. Happen is fourth, and Kelsey's cross trails into the slow pace onto the backstretch. Concrete Rose, the heavy favorite, leading the way here on top a length and a half through a 51.41 half mile. It's been an easy go for her so far. Her lead is a length and a half. Coral Beach on the outside. Olin Dahl third near the inside. And they're followed by Happen and fourth and still at the back is Kelsey's Cross. So Concrete Rose will carry her speed to the far turn. She's been just cruising along so far at an easy clip and is in front by a length. And now John Velasquez brings Coral Beach a bit closer, cutting the gap to a half length after three quarters and one 15.93. Then Olin Dahl, Happen comes under a ride, and Kelsey's Cross is the trailer as Concrete Rose turns for home and the Saratoga Oaks with the lead. Olin Dahl comes up on the outside into second. Coral Beach is third and then Happen to the outside and Kelsey's Cross. Julian Leparu says, let's go, Concrete Rose, and she takes off. The princess of the turf. Concrete Rose wins the Saratoga Oaks. Happen was second, and then it was Kelsey's Cross and Coral Beach. She's two-thirds of the way there. In this first triple tiara, Concrete Rose, brilliant in the Saratoga Oaks. Next stop, Belmont Park. September 7th in the Jockey Club Oaks. And she's better than average. Uh, the ones behind her, when I made that statement prior to the races, I think we have an average group of three-year-old fillies, and that's nationwide. That, she is not average. The ones behind her, she made look average, and she's a very good filly, and I, I, I think this was extremely impressive. I know there was no pace. She was able to set that. We knew there wasn't beforehand. I didn't expect her to make it, but she did it easily. Stick uncocked. Julian Leperu, the pat on the shoulder, Andy and Tom, when Le Peru just, just gave her her cue, Concrete Rose's response, devastating. It was indeed, Lafitte, but you know, I don't think that's the time that uh, Julian Le Peru thought he had the race won. My God, down the backside, you're going a half mile, 51 and four. Your horse is literally waiting for a command from you. The ears are going back and forth saying, please, can I start running now? And Julian's like, not quite yet, my friend. But boy, when he lets her go, she is gone. But this race was over, Andy, with that slow fractions and nobody able to go with her early. I agree. Nobody wants to do anything towards the front end. And Julian just took advantage of it. And she basically did what you would say was closing off her own fractions. And she was obviously just an hour better than these horses. How good? the race was well we'll determine that a little bit later she's obviously very very good and significantly better in competition expect the stewards inquiry and the three coral beach who may have finished fourth in the year she's going to get disqualified here because she did appear at least on the pan i should say it appeared in the pan that she badly fouled the one to lend and maybe we'll see if that happens no, no sign of an inquiry or objection just yet five two four three gary how much extra credit do you give concrete rose and, and i realize how slow the pace was and how slow the tempo was but essentially she shows a new dimension she's never won in wire to wire fashion before and seemed completely within herself comfortable doing no, it but as a fan of hers i was confident she could do it she's a very intelligent filly uh, obviously and uh she's great to cha train uh train there's uh, the inquiry Rusty. yeah there we go and i saw right. what i saw what andy saw and uh 
I saw a duck in. What was it, about the uh, eighth pole, I think, Andy? Yeah, it sounds about right, Gary. You know, you want to see the head on because we all know how misleading it can be. But... I don't think we need to. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we go. We'll see it right here. She's, she's already sort of drifting in a bit, Gary. And here it comes, right? Oh, oh. oh. you know what? And he, he's got that other filly outrun. The two came out and, and bumped her in the rear end, turning her in. So I, I don't, they may disagree with me, but I've had that happen before. There's not a lot you can do. Well, uh, maybe, maybe, she was, maybe she was getting even with a Chad Brown horse after a newspaper record bounced her around <laughs> in the Belmont Oaks. Yeah, yeah Gary, I'm with you. Uh, I, I really don't think no, the that one the, horse. the problem was with the one horse, but the horse right inside of her in the white silks actually moves over and hits her at such an angle, it caused her to lose her balance. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was all undone. You're right. It came out, but she moved out, and at that point, um, she had her outrun. Uh, at least a half length, maybe three quarters. And when the contact happened, that forced a, her front part of her body in uh, directly. And that's a scary feeling for both riders when that happens. This could dramatically affect the Superfecta players. Five, two, four, three, race shape, guys. What happened to the speed that was supposed to materialize, Gary? We we're expecting to see Kelsey's cross, show pace, pace maybe Coral Beach, and it was Concrete Rose all by herself. As Larry Colmas pointed out in the first quarter, he, she was waltzing. Well, look, uh, Patrick being Cones Philly has never been on the lead before with some extremely slow factions at Gulfstream Park, who notoriously, they have a very quick turf course, uh, quick early fractions, and, and she'd never been on the early lead before at any distance. So I... I for one, and maybe the only one here that didn't think she had a shot in heck of, of being uh, on the lead. And then you've got uh, three European fillies on the inside. The, the French fillies, they're trained to go nose to tail. They very, very rarely lead. And Happen has never led in a race before. Coral Beach had never led in a race um, either. So um, I'll be honest, I, I expected Concrete Rose to be on the lead after... Um, the scratch of Her Royal Highness, who didn't have any speed either. I, I agree, Gary, but, you know, I want to ask Tom as a trainer and you as a rider. You've got the number four Kelsey's cross in the race. No, she's not naturally as fast as Concrete Rose, but you know the connections aren't dying to go to the front. You're riding the longest shot on the board, or you're entering the longest shot on the board. Why not take a chance and center the front and at least enhance your check it, your chances for second? Well, and, and she's well, the only other horse with any kind of tactical speed. The Europeans, as Gary well knows, he's ridden a number of them. That's not the way they're trained to run. They're they're trained to get covered up and close, but not true with the four Kelsey's well, cross. She look, could have easily been second Tom, if not on the lead. Sorry, Buzz, but um, Patrick Bancone, I worked for him for a number of years. His horses are trained European style, style French style, nose to tail. Um, he, he may have a horse lead in workouts in the morning, but very rarely would he ever want me going to lead on a horse unless it was a dirt horse. I, I guess what I'm saying is, guys, that with, with Concrete Rose and Le Peru out there dictating things, having everything their own way, and this is a $750,000 stakes race, I, I was expecting somebody at some point to apply some pressure. I, I, I agree. And, and listen, no one is saying, and I know all four of us, I could guess, would say that whatever happened here, Concrete Rose was winning. But it's like nobody took a shot to enhance their chances by being a little more forwardly placed. Yeah. And I think you just reward yourself by taking that chance, especially a well, long shot. I think they got hugely rewarded there because the 21 to shot, 21 to one shot, uh, finished third for $750,000. That was a pretty good reward, I think, for Patrick. Uh, I think they're probably happy. Maggie with a very happy Rusty Arnold. Absolutely, with about 100 other people here in the winner's circle is Rusty. Big ownership group, they love to cheer this Philly home. But when you saw them go out there instead of 51 and change, half mile, you had to be licking your chops. Yeah, I was pretty happy when I saw him hang up 51. I thought it would be a slow pace, but I wasn't looking for 51. She's so relaxed and turned it into a sprint home. You could see her ears going back and forth. She's like, where's everybody else? Yeah, it was, uh, I thought she'd be in front by default, but I didn't think it'd be in 51. But it's nice that it happens to you every now and then. Absolutely. Now, are you going to try to sweep this uh, Turf Tierra trip uh, series? Yeah, we'll see how she is. It's it's a thought. There's a race at Keelan I like, too. So, Come on, Rusty! <laughs> there's, a, there's a great one at Keelan to go to Queen Elizabeth that's kind of like pulling me that way, but it's going to be hard not to run her back, so she'll probably run in New York. 
Well, we've loved watching her here in New York. Congratulations. Enjoy this win. All right. Thanks, Maggie. All right. Concrete Rose, man, she's swept the first two legs of this turf tiara in easy fashion, Lafitte. At QE2 is all the way in October. Plenty <laughs> of time. Jockey Club Oaks, September 7th, Belmont Park. No change. I'm glad they read that right. You uh, see that? They, and they did. They read that uh, properly, and uh, it, was a, it was a good call. Uh, Remember those colors. The colors of the first ever winner of the Saratoga Oaks. Julian Leperu, Concrete Rose, two-thirds of the way home in the first Triple Tiara.